You're listening to a download from the outdoorstation.co.uk. Number 494. Hello and welcome back to yet another podcast on The Outdoors Station, the longest running UK based outdoors podcast related to self powered travel. I'm your host, Bob Cartwright, and even though we have an available library of almost 500 podcasts ready for you to download today, and they have been enjoyed by over 14 million people, it's easy to forget that there are still many new listeners searching for UK-based outdoors podcasts, and they have yet to find us. We have a newsletter sign-up over on the outdoorstation.co.uk, and I would like to take a couple of moments, if you don't mind, to welcome some new people to our engaged listener base from around the world and share a few of their comments. So in no particular order, I'll just run through a few names and some of the comments and uh, you'll get the idea of the flow of the newsletter when you sign up. First of all, Paul Cook, uh, all from the UK. Mike Appleton, who looks to be an outdoors writer. Uh, Camille Matios, who I think is from the Pyrenees but living in Scotland at the moment. Christian Hammer from Germany. Clive Taylor from the UK. Jens Hallerman from Germany. Richard Priest and Tom Burns. Uh, I think Tom's from down Cornwall Way by the looks of it. Matthew Horsfield, Gary Mitchell from Northern Ireland, Ralph Radford, uh, Dave Vaughan, uh, Simon Medhurst, uh, Carl Lopez from the USA, Phil Hurd, Brian Varney from good old Kent, Tony Brinklow, Ray Pearson, Theo Browers from the Netherlands, Martha Wheaton from Canada, Danny Nicol, UK, and Tommy Jarvis, uh, New Zealand, plus, of course, Tom Hart from the UK. Now, uh, as much as they're spread around the place, the, it's the feedback comments that were really useful to me. Certainly, Camille Matios uh, signed up in uh, nine, 2019. She wants to hear about more stories from people and experiences, which is great. Christian Hammer from Germany, he said that uh, hearing the podcast on the way to work makes him want to book flights to Wales and to Scotland, and he had to stop listening because it makes him <laughs> depressed at work. Not the kind of feedback we like, but we understand where you're coming from. Matthew Horsfield only recently found the podcast, and once again, it's just reminded me that people are still finding us for the first time. However, Dave Vaughan has been enjoying us for years, on both the podcasts and on YouTube. And Brian Varney is saying that uh, he's looking for something, a more kit and advice aimed at older people uh, like himself that have gone back to hiking and he's now taking his grandson with him, which is great to hear. And Tommy Jarvis mentioned the that he enjoys the podcast and the YouTube and the gear reference and all the tips and that sort of thing. Now, as part of the newsletter, we also ask people if they have any cottage manufacturers in the UK that they'd like us to have a word with or see if we could follow up in some way. And uh, it's quite interesting. There's quite a few people have mentioned Atom Packs, which I've come across on Instagram, uh, producing custom-made lightweight packs in the UK. So certainly like to speak to Tom Gale there at some stage. Alp Kit once again have popped up. Uh, I did have dialogue with Alp Kit, but uh, it sort of fell apart, unfortunately, with different things. The other things which are suggested they could mention are campsites or places to go, which would be of interest to people if we can get round to it. Oh, and of course, Abby Barnes pops up as another suggestion for an interview. And I've been following some of her videos recently on YouTube, which are great to uh, great to see. So I do suggest you uh, you catch up with her as well. So welcome one and all, and I look forward to following up some of those suggestions and contacts very soon. Community, of course, is even more important these days to keep the outdoor spirits alive. So if you wouldn't mind, please share the details of the outdoor station within your social media group or your outdoor social group. A latch on perhaps to our Instagram or Twitter. Uh, and possibly if you have a moment, which would re- actually really help, uh, perhaps pop some feedback on iTunes on the podcast feedback. That would be great help as well so that others can find us and know what we're about. Now, talking of communities, a friend of mine, Heather, has been posting updates on her social media recently of various trips she's undertaken with the Adventure Queens. She was telling me how supportive and proactive she found the women-only group to be, either online or in person at various events that she'd attended. And this prompted me to find out more. Adventure Queens was set up a couple of years back by Emma Frampton and the irrepressible Anna McNuff, and they seemed to have found a niche which wasn't being particularly well supported. 
By the way, as an aside, have you been following Anna's progress on YouTube relating to her Barefoot of Britain challenge, running some 2,620 miles, that's 100 marathons, barefoot through Britain. And she started in June of this year, 2019. No? Well, you'll find all the links to her in the show notes and what she's doing. It's nuts, it's fascinating, it's impressive, all in equal measures. So congratulations to Anna for what she's doing. But she's got a big smile on her face every single day. It's incredible. I don't know how she does it. Anyway, I caught up with her partner in crime, Emma, who is an equally positive spirit, and asked her to tell me more. So Adventure Queens is a UK-based, non-for-profit women's adventure community. Uh, It was set up with the aim of delicately smashing down barriers that prevent women from getting outdoors and heading off on adventures. Well, there's a couple of questions immediately come to mind there. First of all is, where are these barriers and what do they look like? But uh, before we come on to that, tell me a bit about uh, yourself and your co-founder and how it all came together. Sure. Uh, So Anna McNuff, so co-founder of Adventure Queen. So we met uh, what feels like many moons ago now. Uh, We were marketing desk buddies um, and became some good friends from there, um, enjoyed many a wild camps. How did you find you were kindred spirits from that point of view then? Were you both previous sort of solo adventurers? No, So I suppose we have had a very different journey into adventure. Um, Obviously, you know, she's pivoted from the world of marketing and is now a professional adventurer. Um, But that's sort of almost what has made probably Adventure Queens also so brilliant. So she grew up with two Olympian rowing parents, um, grew up being outdoors a lot, um, camping and everything. Uh, I grew up playing loads of sports, um, incredibly... um, active sort of enthusiastic hiking parents but camping was not their thing so uh, I think kind of my last camping memory was probably my second to last year of school and it was horrific Uh, just flies had I think been put through tumble dryers and all those things that you're not supposed to have done with you know kind of the the loaned out school tents Uh, so for years I, I thought I hated camping um and Anna and sort of a boyfriend at the time uh introduced me will reintroduce me to camping and that was probably what started my love of wild camping and um and yeah getting into it a little bit more from there so uh, although your accent suggests you are a kiwi you only spend a couple of years there so all this activity that you've been doing has all been uk based uh so i spent most of my childhood in new zealand so kind of a lot of the hiking um so for weekends that we would do as family, that would be that was New Zealand. Um, and I think as is the way I probably I probably took for granted what I had on my doorstep. Um, but yes, I sort of I moved back to the UK about 11 years ago. And so sort of most of what I've been doing um, has then sort of been UK based or I've uh, sort of gone overseas and um, explored a bit of this cycle touring malarkey. <laughs> malarkey. Good. <idea. laughs> I shall tell the professionals next time I speak to them. Let me talk oh, to you I about don't. this malarkey. <laughs> well, I'm, de- I'm definitely not a professional. <laughs> it's all just a bit of. It's all just a bit of fun. <laughs> it's just oh. another way to explore. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So the the what I'm trying to grasp. Obviously, Anna's had this sort of um, what should we say professional approach to to outdoors. Just from she's you know it's organic. She's inherited it as it were. Uh, and you've had the more down to earth, shall we say, family experience. And you've been out together and, and, and had a, a few world camps, uh, what, I, I presume, around London, outside of London. Where did you go? What did you do, just the two of you? Uh, so it was normally uh, there were a few of us, um, and um, it was accessible from London. So so taking inspiration from Al Humphrey's um, micro-adventures, so you know, shutting down the laptop um, as soon as you could post five o'clock um, and going off for the night and then being back at our desks um, the next morning ready for work. So any anywhere that was sort of accessible. So uh, Children's was one of them, for example. Um, we sort of pushed it slightly and went a little bit a little bit further, which <laughs> which was a bit um, touch and go for getting back to work at time um, and time, I should say. Um, but yeah, anywhere that was sort of within ideally an hour by transport and then probably a 45 minute walk at the other end uh, just to make sure that it's, um, yeah, 
we'd be we'd be back in time. Back in time, okay. And and how did your your work colleagues take what you were doing, or did you keep it as a, a big secret? Oh no, uh, I think they just thought we were a bit mental. Um, but uh, yeah, we didn't manage to drag anyone else out with us from work, unfortunately. Um, but I think kind of what was brilliant was just um, again sprinkling the idea that you know after work can look different. It doesn't have to be the, I suppose, the norm of what some people will do, whether that be, you know, going straight to the gym or going for a run or going home to watch TV or whatever that might be, that actually you can, you know, go and sleep under the stars for a night. And if you're lucky, hopefully you will uh, get to see the sunset and maybe even the sunrise as well. And that's pretty magical. Absolutely. Um, Tell me about the moment where the penny dropped that actually there could be other people that really would like to do this, but for whatever reason, uh, there was something stopping them. And we'll come on to what the sort of prob- the problems can be. Um, so I think kind of between probably Anna and I working together, um, she obviously uh, sort of went off on her journey, um, pivoting, as I said, more towards becoming a professional adventurer. For me, um, it, the whole idea of... Um, helping people change their narrative um, and doing that through community came out in a very different way. Um, And that was partly kind of for us where we were very keen to join forces because one, we had slightly different kind of um, paths and curiosities, but also we previously worked together. We're we're quite different personalities, but we're a very good balance and we, and we know that we work well together. And then I think kind of just the adventure part for me, um, came alive just through through my own sort of journey and realizing actually uh, what adventure can give you um, in your own sort of self development and how you can take that into other parts of your life as well. So, so what did your first advert actually say then, and where did you put it? Um, so it was just on social media um, and just asking people if they were interested in coming out for a wild camp. Um, McNuff had, sorry, Anna, I should say, had put it out from her account, um, had a huge response. Um, and that was probably when the penny dropped of, because of the response, realizing, right, there is obviously a need for this. Uh, and so we set it up from there, not quite knowing what it could become. Uh, not quite knowing how big it might be, um, but just having this inkling that we would be able to help some people in some shape or form. The the original advert then, was it originally targeted at women only as well? Yes, it was aimed more at women. Yeah, yeah. And and so the overwhelming response, what, 5, 10, 20? What sort of numbers are we talking about even no, at that stage? It, it was more like a couple of hundred. Good grief. Yeah, and, I, and so that was kind of it of just realising, right, let's try and help these people. Uh, and just because of our... Um, So background and working together um, where we work well, um, quite a good balance. uh, And also the fact that we've had quite different adventure journeys, uh, thought that kind of combining forces, we would be able to, uh, yeah, to help people in some, some way or some shape or form. The home of UK based audio and video podcasts for lovers of the great outdoors everywhere. It's all about getting out and having much more fun. So we'll come on to some of the adventures and activities that you cover in a while, but I'm more interested in understanding what are the general barriers or perceptions that women have that prevent them from from having many adventures of any format. Yeah, sure. So I think um, the biggest one is probably mindset that we end up probably having um, you know, sort of t- I'm going to stereotype our entire community into about two groups. I think there's sort of one group who have um, grown up in the outdoors um, and still have that confidence and competence to go out in it, but are looking for um, a group to go and do fun stuff with, um, which is where um, Adventure Queens appeals. And then there's another group who maybe grew up in it, but then, you know, for whatever reason uh, stopped um, sort of spending as much time in the outdoors, haven't gone back to it and have just lost that confidence or maybe they haven't grown up in it at all. Um, and so for a lot of people, I think there's a, 
it can feel quite overwhelming, that kind of knowing where to start, um, you know, what is that 101 information that uh, doesn't feel too overwhelming and is going to give me um, sort of that holding hand that I need, um, but also to remind people that it doesn't have to be big steps either. Um, so I think it's, it's very, it's very kind of uh, sort of logistical, but also very much, uh, mental as well. Do you, do you find there, or have you found that there is a, a fear of being misinformed when I've, I've seen a lot of posts from women on Facebook, for example, on different outdoor camping, uh, forums or, or groups or whatever that ask for advice and very quickly it turns from a few helpful practical uh, pieces of advice to people just getting silly uh, and by that I do mean the tone in which they're they're obviously the person asking the question is genuinely interested in whatever whether it's an adventure or a particular trip or where to camp or what equipment to take and all of a sudden it turns into or we'll take the kitchen sink and, and whatever you know rather than actual practical advice I can definitely understand where you're coming from and that I, do, I remember when I uh, was getting into wild camping, for example, and uh, trying to self-serve and research what, you know, what do I take? Um, you know, fortunately, boyfriend at the time was uh, did a lot of that anyway. Um, as I said, you know, Anna and I, uh, we were going out so she could kind of give me tips as well. Um, but I found kind of the advice at the time um, fairly unhelpful because it was very much that, well, anything goes, you can do anything. Uh, which I think kind of when you are just getting into something, although I think people are trying to be helpful and reassure that actually there isn't always a right or wrong, but I think actually when you are getting in something for the first time, sometimes what you want is actually just tell me what I need and then I can play with stuff myself and um, learn what actually works for me. Yes. Um, and that's kind of where um, – Within the community and some of the tips that and advice that we give, it's very much on here are some options for you. Um, this is what's worked for us, um, you know, from the kind of the basic through to the plush. And I'm kind of thinking wild camping kit, you know, kind of, but even just stuff that you would need if you're, you know, going out for a day, for example, you know, um, shoes, waterproof jackets, you know, all that kind of jazz. Um, there's always a, a, a scale of, you know, um, budget to expensive options, um, but trying to to help start that conversation around kind of what had worked for us. Um, and now people in the community are posting all the time and asking questions and loads of people are constantly answering and, you know, sharing kind of what has and hasn't worked for them. So we talked a lot about the community and um, how Adventure Queen started, but obviously you're not purely a forum type community or actually doing activities as well. So tell me about how you uh, prepare the activities and people get involved and what sort of things they do. Sure. So uh, we, at sort of an, an HQ, as you like, level. Uh, so we host uh, campouts throughout the year. Um, generally do about four. And they are held at Wilderness Back to Basics campsites. Um, so... And very much the, the aim is a chance for women to come together, meet each other face to face, connect, share, support in the same way that they do, um, you know, online, but obviously in face to face. Um, we have campfire stories. We go rambling together. Uh, we do other activities that people might want to offer up. So we've had um, acro yoga. Uh, we've had art creations. Um learning how to light fires uh we've we've had a yeah bunch of really fun things and this is again just you know women sharing uh and sort of and helping um teach others within the community uh we've also then got uh 29 local groups in the uk and then we've got three overseas and those local groups are all around the country so from cornwall right up to scotland uh, and in those local groups, it's a chance for people to connect with women in their area um, and they can either organize activities themselves. So whatever kind of meetup um, they'd like to do uh, and the chief queen. So it's what we sort of call the, the volunteers who um, very generously look after those groups. Uh, they can also organize um, activities as well for anyone that wants to join. So that can be anything from paddleboarding through to hiking or wild camping or, um, yeah, whatever they want. 
I see that uh, on your website you've got a Get Involved page, uh, but you don't actually break it down on the website anyway where the different groups are, are based as such. So is that something that women find out when they, uh, they sign up for your email and actually become part of the team, as it were? Yeah, so kind of on the, in the Get Involved page, kind of further down the road, the different sort of local groups that people can join. But when you when they join the main Facebook group, they're also directed to um, one of the local groups. Um, so they can join up with both. And, uh, yeah, there's also the opportunity to sign up for the uh, email newsletter. And there's also our Instagram channel. Um, so another just a way for, for people to be able to just get inspiration and, and sort of celebrate what others are doing. And talking about celebrating, I think it's quite nice. I see on your main menu here, you've got an Adventure Queen grant system as well. Tell me yes, about that. Yes, we do. Yeah, so the Adventure Queen Queen grant, we launched that two years ago. Uh, and that is our way to help one woman uh, go off on her first big adventure. Um, so we've had, uh, yeah, two two years now. So the first one, the first winner was Sue Barrett. Um, who is in her mid fifties um, and did an incredible alpine adventure through Europe, where she mainly ran a bit of cycling and a bit of hiking. Um, and then we've had Vanessa Richards, um, who has just got back actually from she won um, the, the 2018 grant, and she hiked through some very unpronounceable places up in Scandinavia and um, just kept posting some incredibly draw-worthy photos. Um, so the grant is very much um, aimed at just helping helping women take that giant leap into the unknown. Um, so those that haven't done that before, um, so it's our way of, of nudging them to do that. Uh, so the grant so far has been a thousand pounds worth of cash, a thousand pounds or a thousand pounds worth of kit, thousand pounds cash, um, and then sort of mentoring and advice from the grant team. Um, we're actually changing the grant slightly this year, though. We're changing the format, um, and that is um, because we want to try and help more women um, as much as we can. And I think kind of also recognizing that actually. Um, one person's idea of a great big adventure is very different to somebody else's. Uh, so previously, um, the criteria was very much that it had to sort of be at least two months long, um, ideally solo um, and uh, human powered. Um, the human powered um, is definitely still part of the criteria, um, but the biggest criteria is more about that um, it's still their, their first big adventure, but big, the definition of that is just that it massively gets you out of your comfort zone. So it's that sort of tipping point of really excited, but sort of shitting your pants a bit as well. Um, so we're going to have three smaller grants this year to try and help um, sort of more people. And it's being supported by Merrill this year. So, yeah, excited to be to be joined by them. I know you're a non-for-profit organisation or, or group, but how are you raising the money that you're offering to people for a grant? So that has been uh, very generous, actually. It's been through Anna uh, with her books. Um, so it's just through book tickets um, for her last two books that she's written. Um, so we've been, she's been very generous at, um, at helping sort of fundraise the money. Um, this year, though, Merrill are being very generous and that they are donating both um, – the cash, but also the kit. Um, and we're also looking to, to do sort of some more fundraising within the community. So, for example, at our events, whenever we are hosting a camp out, but there's the option for people um, to contribute into the into Adventure Queen grant. Uh, also, if people buy T-shirts, then the percentage of that goes into the grant as well. Yeah, I was just looking at the T-shirt page and... <laughs> I quite like the uh, the the Wonder Woman. That sounds uh, yeah. is good to, but all guts, no nuts. Yeah, <laughs> that's got to be uh, that's got to be an Anna uh, idea, surely. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, bit of bit of fun, and I'm actually sitting here in my Adventure Queen's T-shirt, so I am wearing the brand. You're you're feeling feeling the vibe, feeling the vibe. Exactly. Exactly. So you st- you started right at the very beginning then with those two or three hundred people that uh, that replied to that original advert. Uh, what sort of numbers now members wise have you got? 
So at a total level across social media, we have got about 12,500. Um, so, it, yeah, so it's grown a fair bit in the last two years. And that's been sort of organic, um, yeah, sort of word, word of mouth. Um, and obviously kind of the, the local groups as well, they've grown over time as well. And does it take much management to maintain the admin of something like this to, to keep the ball rolling and keep people's interest? So we are incredibly lucky that we have got a large team of volunteers. So we've got um, about 40 women um, from the community and they volunteer their time um, to help with um, yeah, the admin, um, looking after local groups, um, helping out at events, um, yeah, at running kind of the, the social channels as well. Um, so it's very much sort of promoting that ethos of women supporting one another. Well, all I can say then is that you've got your, well, 12,000. That's that's a pretty impressive, consistent number, certainly to manage and keep the enthusiasm and support going. Uh, so fair play to you on that score. Uh, and as you say, it's only two years now. So where do you see it going or what feelings do you have going forward into the future where the Adventure Queens will move into or, or develop? Uh, so I think the, the premise is still very much the same. We want to still keep helping as many women get outdoors and head off on adventures, whatever that might look like, uh, and reach more people and get more and more women out there. So that's what we want to keep doing. Um, and the more women um, that we have that come on board to, to help us um, will enable us to, to keep doing more of that and, and hosting more activities. So that, again, more opportunities for people to connect face-to-face as well. So the, so the demand is still there then? It's still consistent even in, in this day and age of more and more social media? I think, it's, I think there's a balance. I think um, you see so, social media gets a pretty bad, uh, can get quite a bad rap. Um, but I think the Facebook, for example, it enables us to, to have the community pages and to have that space for people to be able to connect online, to then be able to... Uh, then go and, and meet offline, and I think kind of uh, without social media, um, it would be it would be that a little bit harder to do that. Um, so I think the that's where kind of the the volunteers are, are hugely important, and and where we're just um, incredibly lucky to have them um, because they they help make those groups possible. Um, there's obviously there's quite a lot of work that goes into them, so just. Uh, accepting people into the groups, sort of making sure that they, they remain the uh, safe and positive and supportive space that they are meant to be. Um, and to, to keep nudging people as well to kind of get out there. And if you know people have setbacks, to try and not let that um, yeah, deter them. If you know of any women in your outdoor circle who might appreciate a female boost in confidence or a helping hand to get more from the outdoors, please pass on the link to this podcast or any of the social media links to the Adventure Queens, which you'll find over on the outdoorsstation.co.uk website. My thanks to Emma for being a good sport, as that particular evening we did have a few technical difficulties. Do check out Anna's madcap Barefoot Britain. Her daily video diaries are a pleasure to view, and you never know, she may be near you right now. It looks like this week may be the last good one weather-wise. It's incredible how long this sunshine has lasted for, so let's make the most of it, folks. Until next time, everyone. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to this podcast. To hear or see more from our extensive free library, please visit theoutdoorsstation.co.uk. Thank you.